Well, hello, friends. It is so good again to see you this week. Thank you so much for joining me, Pastor Zach, for this week's children's sermon. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great week of school. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful fall weather. Maybe you've been able to go pick some pumpkins or collect some apples or whatnot. But I'm so grateful for our time together. And I just want you to find that comfortable place, whether inside or outside. And then when you get there, let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out together. Ready? One, two, three, in. Hold it and out. That great weekly reminder that God fills us with the breath of life. And as we have this breath of life, the spirit of God moves in our lives so that we might continue to love God and love our neighbor even more. So I have another question for you, and I know that probably surprises a lot of you. Have you ever been to a party? Yeah, maybe you've had your own birthday party or you've gone to somebody else's birthday party, or maybe you've been to a wedding or maybe if you've asked your parents, maybe they have. Weddings are kind of a big deal, and parties are a big deal, right? Sometimes you get some of the best stuff. You get cake, maybe you get pizza, maybe you get soda or something really delicious to drink. Maybe you're allowed to have more sweets than you normally get, right? Parties are this festive occasion. It's this time to come together to celebrate, and it's a time for community, which is so beautiful. It's also where people go all out sometimes. We get pres we come and bring presents. We we sometimes get uh gift bags, right? There's so much stuff that goes into a party, especially planning, right? It sometimes takes weeks, months, years to have a great party. This Sunday, we're going to hear a story about a party. We're going to hear about a king who has the party is ready. There's food, there's drink, there's places to sit. And no one from the invitation list comes. They all say that they're going to, but then no one shows up. Could you imagine if you go to a party, or I guess that means you wouldn't go, and no one showed up? What does that sometimes, what would that, how would that make you feel? What would that communicate to you, right? Wouldn't you feel kind of icky? You'd feel like maybe you wouldn't feel wanted or loved. Maybe you wouldn't, maybe you would feel sad. You might probably be a little bit upset. That's what happened at this party in Matthew's gospel. The king makes a great party and nobody comes. So then what the king does instead is he tells people, go out. He tells all the people who are there to help, go out to the streets and find everybody and tell them to come to the party. So here comes in so many people. They all come in and then they start celebrating and having this great time together. Some people show up not wearing the right thing and the king kind of gets mad. But people start showing up because they've been invited in person. They now come in. All the people who now weren't there, there are people who are filling their spots. And the king, I would imagine, is now happy. He is grateful that people now are coming to the party and all this time and money and great things to drink are not wasted, but they're rather enjoyed with people, with community. And it just is a reminder that sharing a meal together, that just being together, being around the altar, like we always have communion every week, right? With bread and wine. We have this meal week after week to remind us of God's love. 
and that all people are invited to come forward and experience God's love and blessing or taking the bread and the wine or the grape juice. But everybody is welcome, which is so awesome because it is a reminder of what Jesus has done for us, that because of the cross, Jesus lives and that Jesus has given us all new life, that Jesus has died for our sins, for all the bad stuff and icky stuff that we do, for all the times we don't show up when we should, for all the times we might get scared or we don't speak up when we should. Jesus comes for us and says, hey, go to church, go find a community, come and hear good news. That good news that you are loved and you are enough. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate you from God's love that is in Jesus. Friends, that is just so amazing that God's love is for you that there's always an open seat at the table for you because God wants you. God wants that relationship with you and that God is always right there with you every single second of the day. Leading, guiding, accompanying, standing right next to us, helping us, through the good times and the bad, but reminding us always that we are loved, that we are enough, that we are transformed, and that we are chosen and called to be bearers of love so that we can share love with others. We come to the party, we come to the banquet, we come to the table so that we might be refreshed and nourished in love. So that we might know the blessings that we are given each and every day. And that with God, with God, all things are possible. And that with God, we are sustained in our community together. That's why church and coming together on Sunday for Sunday school for different things that the church does is important because it strengthens our bond together. It strengthens our love together. And friends, I am so grateful that you are a part of this church, that we get to do God's work together that we can embrace and hold on to God's love together and that we can tell other people together that they are loved and they are enough, just like us. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that you invite us to the table where you love us, where we get to laugh and be happy, where we can also be sad. But we are grateful that you are there, O God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much again for joining me this day. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday and again back next week. Take good care. Bye-bye.